Hello folks, and welcome again to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time with us, then please like, share and subscribe as you do not want to miss all the stories I have got in store, chronicling my journey from Africa to the United Kingdom. So here I am, thinking about the most apt title for my first story on this channel. Lawyer from Hell? You don't need an immigration lawyer? Regardless of the title, I hope you will learn a thing or two about my ordeal in the hands of this immigration lawyer. To provide context, I will start from the very beginning. The UK colonized quite a few African countries, which allowed for easy migration of people from Africa, West Africa, to the UK. And similar to Brexit brohaha in 2016, it got to some kind of climax in the early to mid 80s, where the then PM aka Iron Lady decided to throw us a curveball. By us, I mean we Africans, and ended the citizenship by birth in 1983. Obviously she must have felt pressured, or maybe not, but wanted to plug the gaps where African parents will get on the plane at 8 months pregnant, and jet off to the UK solely to give birth to a British kid, under the care and funding of the NHS. Incidentally, I fell into the category of children that were born at the time. However because of the sheer complexity around gaining citizenship by birth, it wasn't really clear whether I was British or not. This wasn't helped by the fact that my mum decided to bring me back to Africa at a very young age, and all of the travel documents got stolen as well, luckily I wasn't. Anyways, I grew up in Africa, wasn't sure whether I was a British or not, and this affected me somewhat because I wasn't sure about plans for education, either at home or abroad. Although it wouldn't have mattered much because my dad wasn't keen on me leaving his sides. All my attempts to apply for citizenship back home failed, or rather I didn't see it through due to copious reasons, which I do not want to go into in this piece. The advice I kept receiving was to travel to the UK, and apply for citizenship from there. Well I hope it was easy as that, in fact a so-called citizen got refused visa to even go on holiday to his country of citizenship, how intriguing is that? Anyways, by hook or crook, and by the divine grace of God, I managed to travel for study in the UK by communal effort, and sponsorship from a much revered family member. As you would expect, before long, I made consultation to answer the most important question. Was I actually British or did the Iron Lady do me dirty? I guess we will find out soon enough. If I can remember vividly, my first meeting with the lawyer was quite surreal. After asking about my family history since before 1900 BC, which was quite understandable, he started asking me more questions which I felt was weird and confusing. He asked why I felt I was British? And he wasn't even sure of the current changes to the immigration policy around the time of my birth. This did not really fill me with confidence, as it felt like he should be the one paying me for immigration consultancy services, instead of the other way around. After handing over all my documents to him, he promised to do some more investigation and get back to me. Subsequent meetings weren't very helpful either. It felt to me like he was more sentimental than factual or objective. Instead of him simply telling me that he wasn't sure if I qualified, and been brutally honest with me, he started asking me for ideas on the grounds for the citizenship application. So this is where I must point out the first lesson here. If you are completing any type of form, immigration or otherwise, and you are asked to select from a list, your grounds of application and you cannot find any of the categories that you fit in, then you do not qualify. I know it's a lot easier for a more mature me to say now. However, I didn't have the confidence to be honest with myself, and a good number of my family members did not want to discourage me. So I had to fork out a significant amount of money to an immigration lawyer who had no clue what he was on about. In one of our other meetings, he was asking me to include my academic excellence, having graduated with first class from uni, and work-related achievement, as part of the supporting documents for my application. It was at that time, it became clear to myself that the application was really to fulfill all righteousness, and for him to get paid, as it seems it would be unethical for him to refuse my money on the grounds that I was not qualified. Interestingly, there was something I did back then that I am still proud of till today. After his research, I asked him if he had found any grounds for my application, and he responded in the affirmative. I then asked him to show and explain those grounds to me. He just mumbled utter rubbish, and it was at that point I confirmed my suspicion. Afterwards, I told him to send me a copy of my application, statements, and supporting documents, before making the submission so that I could peruse them. And as you are probably thinking, he never sent them to me. After about three months, we got a response from the home office, which was a decline of my application, on the grounds that I did not show enough corroborating documents that I qualified for what I was applying for. 
If you recall, I told you the legislation surrounding citizenship by birth changed around my birth time, and ordinarily just being born without your parents being resident meant that you weren't British. Hard pill to swallow I know. It was later I realized that the lawyer was deliberately coy about this with the home office and did not provide any evidence to support this. Probably because there was none. Then came the second decision point, what do I do next, now that my application was refused? Well my lawyer with the legwork told me that I needed to appeal because they provided me the opportunity to. Hmm I thought, do you appeal just because it is an option, and with no compelling evidence? Will that lead to a different outcome? If I may burrow Einstein's parable of quantum insanity. Where he says that insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, and expecting a different outcome. By that analogy, it is fair to say that both myself and my lawyer were insane. Well, he put some comments on a piece of paper and attached some family member statements of support to the application. The result was the same but at least we got ourselves a court hearing, where I had to pay my lawyer to rent another attorney because he doesn't attend court. And here comes the most embarrassing day of my life, my first official courtroom appearance. It was as jarring and jaw-breaking as I thought, and only one family member was allowed to go in with me to see the judge, along with my lawyer who was representing me. Now this is where I must state that the presence of a legal representation for me did not make any sense. The dude only made a two-sentence opening remark and said something along the lines that I felt I was British, and was qualified to make the application hence my application. The representation for the home office on the other hand, who had about 50 case files on him for that day, came firing in all cylinders, in his submission to the court. He said I did not provide a scintilla of evidence for my application, and even today in the court, I still haven't provided any evidence to support my application. He further went on to say that my case was basically a waste of the court's time and resource, and that the judge should throw out my application. Now at this point, I was expecting my lawyer to step in and save me. This is the point where any sane person would have expected my lawyer to come in, and at least save the day, and make some submissions. He just stood there, looking at me and said nothing. I was mortified as no one had prepped me for this, and I had no clue as to what was happening. The judge then asked me if I had anything to say or add to the arguments, I couldn't really say much. The judge then out of compassion for me said she needed more time to consider the case, and she'd let us know her judgment in the coming weeks. I was like no you don't. Of course, she knew there was no merit in my case and was just trying to be polite. After a few weeks, the verdict was in. And as expected, my application was rejected. I felt upset, disappointed, and most importantly angry with my lawyer for putting me through this debacle, and leading me on. I saw the writings on the wall but sentiments did not let me think about those decisions logically, maybe I would have saved myself a few thousands bucks, but I guess I wouldn't have learnt any lesson and most importantly not had this story to share. Since then, as you can imagine, I have only made applications by myself, without using any lawyer, and they have all been successful. In fact I have even consulted and assisted quite a few people with similar applications. I even made a PR application here in the UK for a country outside Europe, and was also successful as well. I guess I learnt the hard way and I am better for it. I got the message loud and clear. So folks, that's the ordeal with my lawyer for my UK citizenship application. Hope you learnt a thing or two. If you enjoyed this piece, then please like, share and subscribe to be the first to be notified of the next episode.